So Stanford recently uh, announced that they're going back to virtual, at least for some period of time in response to the, escal maybe you can clarify, but I think it's in response to the escalated, um, how would they phrase it? It's related to Omicron. And um, a few other universities are kind of like uh, considering back and forth. In my perspective, as somebody who loves in-person lectures, who um, sees the value of that to students, to young minds, also looking at the data seems the um, risk aversion in university policies around this, given how healthy the student population is, seems not uh, well calibrated, let's put it this way. Also, pathological. Given, <laughs> pathological is one way to put it. Given that, I, I believe, depending on the university, but I think many universities require that the student body is vaccinated at this point. So I think it's a big mistake by Stanford to do this. And, um, I'd like to say that because I just hope MIT doesn't do <laughs> But what are your thoughts about I, Stanford? I is agree there a with you. I okay. completely agree with you. I think um, we have failed in our mission to educate our students by these this decision. Uh, and, and I think, I, frankly, just more broadly, I think we failed generally over the course of the last year and a half in living up to our educational mission. In-person teaching is vital. For, uh, now I can understand you have a, if you have older faculty, the the principle of focus protection says provide some alternative teaching arrangements for them. That makes sense to me. From the kids' point of view, they're more harmed by not getting the education we promised them than by than by COVID. Uh, so applying this principle of, of this focus protection, let young professors teach in person. This is before the vaccine. After the vaccine, let everyone teach in person. Yeah, this, this is the part, I don't understand the discussion we're even having because, um, okay, let's leave focus protection aside here because that's a brilliant policy for perhaps for the future when there's no vaccine. Now with the vaccine, I'm, I'm misunderstanding something here because we're now in a space that's psychological not it's no longer about biology because uh with the booster shots which i believe mit is now requiring before january with the booster shots the data shows no matter how old you are the risks are very low for um ending up in a hospital relative to all the other risks you face when you're older i don't i don't understand can you explain the policy around closing a university, but also just a, a policy about just being so uh, scared still in the university setting. I think the universities, the great universities have done great harm by modeling this kind of behavior. Yes, that, to me, sorry to keep interrupting, but to me the university should be the beacon of great behavior, not not the beacon of like scared, conservative, Let's not mess up. Pathological. Let's not make it pathological. Let's not make anybody angry. Uh, let's. It should be a place to play in the space of ideas. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I, th I think um, the central problem is actually related to the central problem of COVID policy more generally. The goal seems to be to stop the disease from spreading rather than to reduce the harm from the disease. If the, if the goal is to stop the disease from spreading, the sad fact is we have no technology to stop, to, to accomplish that. At this point. Yes. Because like uh, it's already the, deeply well, integrated well, to the human civilization. Well, I mean, it's, it's here forever, right? There's a zero survey of white-tailed deer in the US. It turns out 80% of white-tailed deer in the US have COVID antibodies. Dogs get it, cats get it. There's almost certainly human, human animal transmission of it. Um, I mean, presumably, I mean, I've heard bats get it apparently. Um, so so you you have uh, you have a situation where you have this disease that's here to stay. Yeah. And it and the vaccines don't stop the spread of it, the lockdowns don't stop the spread of it. We have no technology to, to stop the spread of it. Um, and so we're burning the earth trying to stop do something that's impossible rather than working on what's possible. Uh, and so like, you know, like letting 
regular college happen, that's a great good. Universities are a wonderful invention, that, and, and it's contributed so much to society. To decide to shut it down, the, the universities will, should be fighting tooth and nail to not be shut down, not the other way around. Yeah. Whatever the mechanisms that uh, results in the universities doing that, that's probably, this is me talking, it probably has to do with certain incentives for the administration, probably has to do with lawyers and legal kinds of things to, to avoid uh, legal trouble, but once again, it's when the administration has too much power and too much uh, definition of what the policy is for the university, that's when you get into trouble. The beauty, the power of the university should be about the faculty and the students. Administration just gets in the way. <laughs> get out of the way. I mean, they can help organize things. They, 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 they play some important role, but they, they, they certainly do. But they need to remember what the mission is. The mission is not safety the mission actually universities should be dangerous places you know for ideas and and and, and whatnot 